my video. I okay, we are interviewing Guillermo Zazueta and um, Guillermo is gonna talk more about Conserve Our Futures. Guillermo? Yes, um, thank you everybody for your time this evening. My name is Guillermo. I'm the campaign manager for Conserve Our Future. Vote yes on King County Prop 1. Um, King County Prop 1 is a, uh, would restore King County's full potential to protect the last best open green space. Um, King County Prop 1 is a program largely funded through the Land Conservation Initiative, and it, it largely funds land conservation efforts in King County and 13 other counties. Um, however, the Conservation Futures Program is currently generating about 50% of the original revenue uh, due to separate state legislation. Um, conservation Futures can no longer match the pace of property values as the last best open spaces to, uh, for price. Um, a little bit of sort of background on the initiative. Um, King County voters are, it's, this is the first time voters are actually going to be able to vote on this measure. Um, back in 2016, King County Executive Dow Constant's team had launched the Land Conservation Initiative. And the Land Conservation Initiative was a regional collaboration between King County, cities, business people, farmers, environmental partners, and others to help create a strategy to preserve our last and most important natural lands. Um, it calls for a series of accelerated actions to address rapidly shrinking open spaces and climbing land prices. Um, by finishing the job in a single generation, we can save about $15 billion over what it would take under our current land preservation trajectory and protect many of these lands before they're lost. Um, you know, a bit, a bit more information about what, what it might cost a homeowner. Um, for less than about two to three dollars a month, dependent on projected median home prices over the coming years, um, for the average homeowner, we can double our capacity to protect forests, rivers, trails, farmland, natural areas, and urban green space. Um, know a little bit more about sort of the what it actually does um, if we were to pass King County Prop 1 if the voters were to pass this proposition um, we would be able to confront climate change by protecting our mature forests and preserve our habitat for native salmon there's about 45,000 acres of current urban green space, farmland, forests, trails, and rivers that do at this point currently depend on King County Prop 1. Um, this ranges from all the different, uh, whether it's a trail, a natural land, an urban green, green space, a county park, a river um, owned by the county, whether it's through King County Parks or DNR, what have you. Um, this is a pool of funds that all these different groups definitely rely on for their continued projects. Um, a last point I'll make sort of as this introduction, there's some critical endorsements we've obtained over the last several months that I think speak to the importance of our environmental community out there. Um, first and foremost, the Saddle Parks Foundation has chosen to endorse this proposition. Another well-known group, the Vashon Mari Island Land Trust, um, the Mountains to Sound Greenway, the Wilderness Society, and Forterra. Um, these are just a few of many groups that have decided to endorse. Um, and uh, well, I, I would also say in closing that um, we, uh, our Conservation Futures Program can no longer keep the pace as property values of the last best green spaces um, dwindle. Um, by mobilizing our legislative districts, our cities, our nonprofits, businesses, and land trusts, we can deliver on the promise of a land conservation initiative for the benefit of everyone who lives here today and for those who will come after us. And we hope that with your support, we can encourage your membership to vote for this initiative, I'm sorry, for this proposition and get it passed this November. Great, thank you, Guillermo, appreciate that. Um, we're gonna take, uh, I'm going to move to questions from the e-board and a reminder you have one minute a one minute response to each question um can we start with uh any e-board questions anyone want to start
Can you um, speak more specifically to what this funding would do to assist BIPOC and other more vulnerable communities that may not have access to open space? Yes, yes. Um, very good question, Sarah. Thank you for that. Um, so my video here. Um, first and foremost, a fact we'd like to throw out there is that only about 20% of King County residents within King County have walkable um, green space to access in their neighborhood. So when you look at this number and you kind of dig into the details of it, we, we you come to find out that the, the remaining 80% of King County residents who don't have access to this urban green space are largely in those communities, BIPOC communities, communities of color, low-income communities, refugee immigrant communities. And you know, it has to do a lot with geography, where we choose to have our parks, where we choose to dedicate our dollars. Um, a perfect example of a uh, program that absolutely depends on this fund is Horseneck Farm down in Auburn. Burn. Um, I'm actually going to quickly paste an article of a recent visit that Dow had made down to Auburn um, this last weekend. And that article there um, discusses and talks about a little bit about how this fund has transformed the lives of immigrant refugee families in Auburn, largely um, from places in East Africa. Uh, Kenya, Ethiopia, Somalia, um, and if you, if you, if for each member here, feel free to after this meeting take a look at this article. Um, this, this is basically a plot of land along the Green River that um, is owned by the county and managed by other nonprofit groups. Um, Highline Community College does a whole bunch of program management there, and they do workshops. They help educate and teach um, refugee farmers how to farm in the Pacific Northwest, given our different climatology in comparison to those countries. Um, uh, they know they learn how to work the soil. So that's just one example, I think, um, of, of the different ways this fund uh, addresses those needs. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, Alice, is it possible you can uh, time, uh, keep, keep track of time? Um, and yeah, sorry, uh, I no, totally forgot. My no bad. problem. No problem. Um, I'll, we'll take Sherry's question and Alice will take your question. And a reminder to keep the responses to one minute. Right. Hey, uh, I'm just curious, is there any uh, type of opposition to this um, proposition? And if so, who are they? Yes, thank you, Sherry, for your question. Um, there is little to no organized opposition for this proposition. Now, I, I do wanna to read to you a con statement that, that was submitted to the voter pamphlets guide that you will see for the November ballot. I'll keep it short, but basically all they say is um, they make a complaint that King County already owns about two thirds of the land in, uh, in the county. Um, they make some comment about um, the futures fund amount and and how they uh, how existing land use laws can limit rural growth and um, we think these are very easily uh, counterable arguments. But in terms of groups organizations against this proposition, there virtually is none. So that they are none. Great, thank you, uh, Alice. Um, yeah, I guess I, I wanted to know a little bit more about the way, I think I understand, but the way that the funds are used, it sounds like the county um, collects the uh, funds and then um, buys land that they use for various programs. Is that they, you know, lease to different programs or conserve in other ways? Is that accurate? Yeah, yes, that's exactly the case. I can speak a bit more in detail about where the current fund draws from and the amount. Um, at the moment, uh, the fund currently only collects about um, 0.03 cents per $1,000 assessed property value. Now, 
were if this proposition were to pass, it would nearly double that to about 0 0.06 cents per thousand dollars assessed property value. So at the moment, homeowners are already paying into this fund roughly $2 um, uh, per month per home. And really this figure fluctuates based on medium home value. Um, so in all, it would add about two more dollars per month. Um, so so that's, that's where it's drawing its fund from. And, 10 and seconds. I hope that answers the question. Great. Um, I, had, I had a question. I, I think that's all the hands that were up, but I, I had a question, which is this, you know, this, this sounds very interesting. What would, what's the opposing argument? Why would someone vote against this? Yes. Uh, great, great question, Ethan. Um, you know, it, it really all, it's, it's a qualitative assessment here and here at, at our team at uh, our CFT, we, we have uh, a strong confidence that this will pass. You know, we're, we're hoping to fundraise over $600,000 until November, and a majority of that will go to our mailers. Um, but to answer that, the biggest opposition, the biggest reason someone might vote no is anytime a homeowner sees on the ballot any sort of increase in property tax, they will immediately vote no. Um, and it's just kind of a reflexive thing for homeowners, sometimes landlords and property owners. Um, there's this tendency to just vote against. So a whole lot of this is going to be education on the, on the proposition. And we're uh, hoping to bring this education Ten at seconds. legislative district meetings, at our launches, um, whether it's with mailers, some advertisements. Um, so that Great, thank you. Uh, yeah, Alice, go ahead. We have time. Yeah. Um, so, is so you said that we the there is an existing property tax. Um, when was that put in place, and why has it fluctuated over time? When when was the last time that voters voted for this? Could you repeat the last question you asked? When when was the last time we approved this? I guess and. Yes, I, to speak directly to that, um, as I've said uh, before, this will be the first time this proposition is put on the table um, for, for the voters. So in 2016, Executive Dow launched the Land Conservation Initiative, and that was its own program. And the program was specifically designed to double our funding and capacity. Um, basically, in 2016, Dow had recognized um, through its own committee um, that basically had managed this fund a decades prior. There's a big long history um, to this to this fund. Um, it goes back all the way uh, 20 the 20 years ago. Um, and I'm I'm gonna give you a quick link here that kind of has a history of it all. Okay. But but basically it's never but been put up. To a, it was a an executive. Um, decision by by the King County executive and um, yeah okay thanks that's helpful yeah thank you um, we have time for maybe one or two more questions if anybody has any more questions yeah I see those links thank you for the links other questions for Guillermo Last call for questions. Okay, we're right about at time anyway, so that's that's just fine. And, um, well, Guillermo, I'd like to thank you for coming down and talking to us at the 36th Legislative District. Um, and a very, very interesting uh, to hear more about what you're doing. And um, anybody else, any other, any other thoughts? All right, well, check out the links and thank you. Thank you again for coming down. I'm gonna take us off recording.